みんなこんにちは元気ですか私はレラックスガーディアンです。It is I, the video that will be your random entertainment for today. Unless you happen to go watch my other videos, in which case the statement would be false. Anyway, um, this one is going to be a little different from my usual ASMR roleplay review videos because I'm not going to be mentioning the YouTuber I'm going to be talking about later because right now I just really want to talk about. <laughs> I just really want to talk about this one YouTuber and then later on I'll just have someone else to fill in the time. Although, that's not really necessary when it's just me and I don't have a script and I'm just gushing. Okay, so the first YouTuber I'm going to be talking about today is. um, Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce this. Is it Alaric? Alaric? Alaric, mm, not sure.、Uh, he hasn't、uh, mentioned this word like, at all as far as I've heard in any of his videos, so I don't know how to pronounce it. So, for all intents and purposes, purposes, I am going to be referring to him as Moon. Now, I am a native English speaker, and I suppose by extension, I do not speak any other languages. My intro is only in Japanese because I'm a weeb. <laughs> so, whenever I do reviews of、um, these ASMR roleplay channels, I also take into account that if I, as a native English speaker, cannot understand what a person is saying in English because they're slurring their words that badly, I. It would be even worse for the people who do not speak English natively. So, that's, let's get that out of the way first.、Um, so, Moon is one of those channels that I've complained about before that they don't tag the appropriate gender in the title. Or the thumbnail. Now, to be fair, some of these are obviously aimed at females, but some of them aren't, and you really can't tell un until you get there.、Uh, don't, don't do that. Just even if you're ever only going to be going for a specific gendered、um, audience, tag it in the title. For me, and I'm sure some other people as well, the gender tag is a big incentive to either watch a video or not watch it. So, with all of the possible negative things that I could say about Moon, let's let, let me just get straight into fangirling. <laughs> so, what should I talk about first today? How about the quality of this dude's voice? Because, oh my gosh. Um, Moon brings something new to the table that I have not seen or heard of before, and I have listened to a lot of various ASMR tists, if you want to call them that. And that is that. His voice, what was that sentence? His voice is fit for ASMR. He has a very smooth way of talking for some reason. And、um, the content that he gives is somewhere. I, I left a comment on one of his videos、um, for this when I realized it. His videos are somewhat are in a weird limbo between obviously scripted and obviously improvised because his words flow naturally. However, 
My brain refuses to believe that people could just spout insults like the wind blows and not stop to think about the next thing to say. Are, are, are there people like that who just, they're, they only talk in insults? Because gosh dang. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, it's, um, it was a compliment, by the way. It's, it flows naturally, but it's just me. I, it's just me being weird. Um, he has a nice, like, low-ish medium tone and the way he talks is a little grumbly and also kind of quiet but not so quiet that you can't hear and again when I listen to ASM artists I look for I mean I listen to how they pronounce their words and his pronunciation is pretty much immaculate there might be a couple of slurred words here and there but overall, the crisp pronunciation of his words are pretty dang good in the, in a sense where even if you don't really understand English, you can put together some syllables in your head. I don't even know what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> uh, it, it's just yes. Just yes. Okay. Wait a minute. Where are all the birds? All of a sudden they got quiet. There were some birds really, singing really loudly earlier on. Is it gonna rain or something? Oh shucks. Oops. So this YouTuber is fairly small, probably like 2.3k the last time I checked. But I would put this dude up there in like my top four yes i'm making another space for another youtuber i had to make a space for hank miller's the the last the no the first second was it second when did i review hank <laughs> was it my second video yeah i think so so there's azuru at the top sisaku at the second Hank as the third, and Moon as the fourth, because, oh my gosh, I, um, this, this specific quality of talking, I have never heard it before. It's so smooth, and, well, I did mention that his voice is kind of grumbly, but, like, it's... The only other VA I can compare this voice to is Keith Silverstein voicing Zhongli. Everyone knows that Zhongli's voice is just like pure ASMR unless you like hear the Osmentis wine quote for like the millionth time that day. There's just something very smooth about the way his lines are delivered that makes my brain go like, I want to zone out. And I'm like, what? No, I'm listening for the plot. Don't zone out. And my brain is like, no, I want to sleep. And I'm like, no, I want to listen. Stop it. It's it's not a bad thing. It's it's just me being weird. And my brain just liking just the smooth way this dude talks. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say his voice is monotone. Because he definitely has some semblance of emotion and um t i don't want to say like the emotion isn't there or it's a, um or it's not portrayed properly in fact it's probably the opposite all of the emotion there is just like how he talks you can tell that's just how he talks and when when he gets mad or upset you can hear it reflected in his tone he doesn't need to raise his voice for that just normal VA stuff I suppose this dude's audio quality is great which is how things should be yes 
um, when it comes to audio role plays, your 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 audio quality needs to be top notch just from the get go. Otherwise, people will just not cling to you as as much. So, my favorite video from him is Sundere Classmate makes you his, and uh, I. This was the video that made me fall in love with this channel because, oh my gosh. That 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 was that was mind blowing. Just seeing a character use um use a person's flaws against themselves and they're and he's like this type of love is very addictive and I'm like there are people who can actually realize it and, and call it out and then just not be apologetic for it at all. <laughs> So, yes, I love it, and I'm also here for the kisses. Oh yes, the kisses. Mm. It's immaculate. Okay, so just for a little bit of context, I am 26, well over the age of 18. I can consume more risque content. Okay, just just letting you guys know, in case I sound like a prepubescent 12 year old boy. I get that sometimes. That's fine. My voice is just, just not deep enough. <laughs> it doesn't make people take me seriously because I have a high voice. I mean, come on, man. It's not my fault I have a high voice. Is the recording? I swear, is the recording? Okay. So, what else was I gonna say about this dude? Oh yeah, I wanted to have a few words for him directly. I I don't know yet if I will go to his channel and be like, um, hey, I, I made something for you. You wanna go check it out? Um So let me see how I do it. I did practice this a little bit, but it's 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 a it's always going to be a little iffy when I actually need to sip you it out. So, Mr. Moon, some of your fans have looked you up on the P-Hub and they were very shooketh. <laughs> I've seen some comments on some of his videos and be like, they looked him up and they were like, what? They didn't actually. They didn't actually say what they found, but I would assume it was the spicy stuff. Uh, sadly, I want to be taking the same trip as them. <sighs> what a shame. And back to what I was talking about. I am sorry, Mr. Moon, but I have no money for your Patreon or anyone else's Patreon for that matter. I can't even buy games or things online because I don't have a banking information and I only have a bank card when people need a credit card. So it's going to be a little difficult. Where am I going with this? You are doing great, Mr. Moon. I love your content. The way you speak, it makes me want to fall asleep. Although I, I'm here for the story, but you seem to be more on the ASMR side, perhaps. Uh, your voice is very nicely suited for ASMR. Me likey. Me likey very much. Also, I have a question. Um, does it bother you to call yourself Daddy? Like, I know that there are some people who will be like, I mean, I can't hear it in your voice, but there are people who would feel uncomfortable to call themselves, um, mommy or daddy. Like, for instance, um, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with calling myself mommy because mommy issues, I guess, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's just a nickname. That's all that, that that it really is. You'll be like, You've been a good boy today. You know what that means. Lots of kisses and pats. Now, why don't you come over here and rest your head on Mommy's lap? 
do you want a little back scratch? Like, it's not, it's not really that big of a problem, right? I mean, I'm weird, so maybe, maybe not. Does it bother you? Because cause it, it, it wouldn't for me, but then again, I, I don't really do this for money or it's just for entertainment. I, I only do audio role plays for entertainment. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, that that one that I did, um, the sneaking up on your crush, I wasn't intended for that to be a series, but I just, I didn't do the second one yet. Uh, d yeah, that's, that's something. Uh, you can go check that out if you want to. It's kind of short, honestly. I didn't expect it to be like five minutes long. So, uh, moving on from that tangent. Um, I am looking forward to more content from you. Although, I don't really care about domestic stuff. So, the ones where the, the listener and the YouTuber are already in a relationship. I probably would not be listening to those. But they're fine. It's just me being weird. And, um, I love your content. You're doing great. Keep it up. I'd like to see more from you. Uh, and, um, mm. Tag your videos properly. <laughs> okay, that will be the end of this session, I believe. Uh, yeah, I'm fairly certain that's all I needed to say. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next one right now. Okay, I was... I was tempted to use my intro because it's been a whole week since the last time I recorded. But you won't be able to tell that because it's during the day. <laughs> Alright, so... You all saw the title... And a thumbnail, so you all know the next YouTuber I'm going to be reviewing. And the name of that YouTuber, slash channel, is Kaguya Masuri Senpai. And from what I've seen from the pinned comments and their descriptions is that this channel is co-run by two people, I think. The reason why I assume two is because the main voice of the channel is a, is, is a male voice, and... Occasionally, if the script calls for it, um, a female voice will also be used for whatever it may need to be. And from what I've seen, it, when that happens, there's not usually like a shout out to another channel when that happens. So I'm assuming that the other person is part of the channel themselves. So they always refer to the channel as we instead of I or me, like people who run their channel by themselves. So, you know what? I, I should probably put this down. It's making, it's making some noise. Okay. So, I was kind of, I was kind of waving it around while I was talking. <laughs> I have some sort of, uh, it's a, you know what? Never mind. Where? I have a feeling that this section is going to be longer than the first one, so I'm sorry, Moon, but, um, yeah, there is a little, there's, no, a whole lot more to unpack here, not going to lie, so I'm going to show you a clip, and for those, for those of you who are listening, I'm sorry, but, well, I mean, it isn't really that necessary to watch. But, watch. <laughs> okay, so, here's a clip. Hmm? Did you miss me? <laughs> Leaving already. Okay. Now, after what you have just seen, you don't necessarily need to have heard it. One day, YouTube recommended me this video. 
And even if you have never seen this character before I showed you this clip, you will be able to recognize this character because it's from a game called Elsword, which I play natively on my channel, occasionally perhaps. It's, it's kind of faded into obscurity, just like Minecraft on my channel. Occasionally, I would use it for background stuff. But overall, Minecraft and Elseworld are still part of my channel. So I still play it occasion. I still play them occasionally. So I put this almost immediately into my Watch Later playlist. Because of one thing, you can see it, you know me, but you know me by now, say it with me, they, de they did not tag the appropriate gender in the title or the thumbnail. Why? It's, is it because they're ignorant and they assume that X listener is applied to only the females? Because it's not. You go to fanfiction.net, uh, Wattpad, um, archive of our own, X listener does not apply to only females, okay? Get that through your head. Stop using just X listener and not tagging the gender. There has been a middle ground for this video, the quick Honorary mention is going to be Suter LP. He is a channel that reads his own fan fictions, and I once asked him why he never advertises his videos as being for a female listener because I got mad enough to ask him about it. And he very bluntly said it, it was for clickbait. He prefers to use the t space in the title to fill it up with tags like lewd, cute, angst, fluffy, etc. And while I can understand that, you have 1280 by 720 pixels in your thumbnails. Why not just put an F and an exclamation mark in front of the listener? Why is that so hard? Then again, it is his channel and he is making money off of it. So, I really don't have any right to come in there and tell him what to do when it comes to his channel. I already know what the, the whole shtick is behind his channel, and I don't blame him for it, because he's making money off of it. But here's the thing, with Kaguya Masuri Senpai, I'm under the assumption that they're not making money off of their channel, because they plaster it all across their pinned comments and descriptions that they have a Patreon, that they have a Redbubble, that they have merch you can buy, all of that other nonsense. They should be making money off of that. There is no there is no reason for clickbait here. Okay? Ugh. I'm thinking about the people like me who will not want to try your video because it doesn't have the, the gender or I guess the appropriate tags to look at when viewing the thing. So, moving on. I had this video in my Watch Later playlist for like about a year, probably six months or so. I, I can't be certain because I don't know the date when this video came out and I don't know why YouTube would recommend it to me because if I remember this correctly, I wasn't really that interested in watching things with elves. Whatever. So, a couple weeks ago, like about three weeks, it's been three weeks now, YouTube started heavily recommending me my own videos from my Watch Later playlist. Probably because I was watching, uh, what's this dude's name? RT Game? Uh, YouTube recommended me one of his videos from his Minecraft uh, story. Oh my gosh. I can't remember. The thing from Telltale Games. Story quest? Story mode? Minecraft story mode, right? Is that correct? 
it's been it's been a while. And so I started watching that series from him and putting the next video into my um, watch later just in case something happened and YouTube would not recommend me the next one in the series. Just, you know, just in case. Because YouTube is very prone to that. Oh, you watched episode 1? Well then, here's episode 3, episode 9, and episode 15. Not episode 2. YouTube is like that. So, to make sure that that didn't happen, I would put things into my watch later and watch them sub subsequently like that. So, one time, one night, this was a night, I was scrolling through my stuff and in my recommended this video popped up and he was like this is from your watch later playlist and I'm like okay let me go listen and I did also save it to my watch later playlist because I was going to comment that you can't put Ventus in the thumbnail and not expect me to click even if it was geared towards a neutral gender audience or a male audience it's not by the way they make it very clear that the listener is female. Oh my gosh, it is going to rain, isn't it? The sky has gotten dark. And the birds are flying around. Oh. So, I started listening and I was surprised to hear that I haven't heard this script before because that's something that happens when there are lots of um, popular scripts they tend to show up in various different uh, channels when they're script filling so then I was pleasantly surprised at how much depth they went into and then I was blown away by one thing and one thing only. The world building. Because, oh my gosh, there is just so much world building in this. And I'm sorry for those of you who don't like exposition dumping from characters. It's an audio. This is the only way they're going to get the lore across. Right? As if the listener is curious and asking a bunch of questions. So... I can relate to this a little harder than most of the people who will be listening to this because I have a story that's about about as in-depth as this one probably not that well fleshed out and there's really nowhere you can go to actually get a proper idea of what I have in my head as opposed to what I have written so far <laughs> because it is a stupidly deep large story. It's been more than 15 years in development right about now and it has changed dramatically from what I had originally planned it to be which was like a mishmash of various fandoms which would have gotten me copyrighted if I'd actually gone through with it. So I was very curious to continue listening to this little series that they had so I stupidly caught up with all of the things that they had available and now I'm sad because I can't listen to any more of the wonderful story oh by the way they make it very clear that listener Chan gets hit by truck kun and ends up on an entirely different planet so yeah it's an isekai story they don't um advertise it as, as that as that but uh, it is very obvious that it is in fact isekai but maybe they'll pull a plot twist on us later i don't know if you are a writer like me i would recommend even if you're not female to go and listen to this because Oh my gosh, this, this channel is like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put them at my number one spot above Weeb Trash Audios for world building because this is just fantastic. Okay, so for those of you who are not aware, 
as I keep mentioning over and over, my story is called Kingdom of the Rainbow Portal. And the name of my channel, while it is my Minecraft username, came from that story. The story is set on a planet called Ferex. The main character eventually saves the planet, which is where the word Ferex Guardian came from. I did end up making my own um, ba uh, backstory for Ferex Guardian, the Minecraft avatar, but that is actually where the name came from. I don't like the name Ferex, not gonna lie. It, it, it feels too... If you were to search up the word Ferex on YouTube, you would get like maybe five, six channels with the word Ferex in it. I don't like that. I want to be unique. So like, if you search up this specific word, you're only gonna find me, basically. It's such a bizarre word that it can only ever come from me. You understand? Or maybe you don't. So I was curious to listen to how they built up their magic system because I have my own. Um, I made up my own, actually, because I did not want to be told, why aren't they using wands? Where are the spells? Magic is demonic, and witchcraft should not exist, and yada yada. It's not magic. My magic system is called Manea, and it's starting to rain. That's great. I hope that you all can still hear me over the rain. It's probably going to get louder. And the wind. The wind is going to be a problem. I have seven elements. The standard first three are fire, water, and earth. And then wind, not air. You can make a hurricane with wind. You can make a tornado with wind. What can you do with air? The most you can do is just suffocate someone with poisonous gas. That's the most that you can do with just stagnant air. But wind, oh boy, wind is an entirely different matter. So, besides those four, I also have plant, smoke, and ice. And no, ice does not come from water on Ferrix. They are completely separate. Ice and water are not the same. Which means that no matter how hot a surface is, it can be covered with ice on Ferex. Or, like I said, my story is stupidly massive because I made a whole freaking galaxy for it. And I've actually applied some physics to it as well. You know how the, Mil the Milky Way is a spiral galaxy with like, what, six arms? The Infinity Fantasy Galaxy has only two arms, but it spins. Here's a rather crude picture I have of it. And then I made a solar system. Four planets. Let me get the picture. Um, they're not this close to the sun, by the way. It's just very crudely drawn and I never bother to fix it. They have um, different lengths of um, what was the word I'm, I'm looking for here? Orbit. So Genesis is the one that's farthest away from the sun. And Ratod, Trishi, and Ferex are the ones that are within the same type of orbit. They are not going to get any closer to each other. They're also not going to get any further apart. So the other three planets are tidally locked, which means that... One side of the planet is eternally facing the sun, and the other side is eternally facing the dead of night. If you could even call it night. Because on a tidally locked planet, there's technically no day and night. There's just light and dark. Anyway, this will not come up in, like, anything other than trivia because they don't mention it. But the other three planets that are not ferrets, that I made are actually supposed to represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, you would not be able to tell that 
unless it was coming from me because there's absolutely no indication that this is a thing. There is actually an Easter egg with this picture. At a certain point in the story, probably a little later, the planets and the stars in between the planets and the sun. Wait, did I say that correctly? There are stars orbiting between the planets and the sun. Right. They form a cross in space at a certain point in time. I can't tell you when because I, I, I still have to figure that out. But here's the thing. Trishy is covered by clouds. Technically, cannot um, have life because it is tidally locked. Ratod is covered in water, also uninhabitable because of the constant temperature. And Genesis has rings of the four seasons in it that are so wide you can see them from space. The top half has spring and summer and the lower half has autumn and winter. When Ferex was created, that's um, when I started concepting what Ferex would look like, it was just slightly bigger than Earth and its distinguishable features were that the sky was not blue. It would change color per season and it had a closer moon than our moon and that the gravity was low, lower or higher. I can't remember. Basically, it would allow the creatures who were born on it with wings to be able to fly with their own physical effort. Because of how um, creatures with wings that have, that can fly with physical exertion, they have hollow bones, which makes them lighter than normal. So the gravity disparity is actually a thing where if these people go to Earth, they will have to deal with heavier gravity and not being able to fly with their own weight because, well, Menea is also a factor in this. So, this is just to talk about how deep my story goes. So, when Ferex was made, it just looked like a bigger Earth and that was it. But then, I... But then, you look at Ferex now and you're wondering where on earth did this rainbow ring come from? And that happened to come from Tumblr. Someone took a Photoshop and imagined what it would be like if Earth had rings like Saturn and took pictures from various places on Earth and imagined what it would be like if you could see a ring in the sky. Some places you could see a straight line of white light other places you can see just the very edge of the ring and I was like "Ooh, that's really scary I want to try that and then because I kind of already had a portal thing going on I was like what if this rainbow ring that I put around Ferex was like a huge portal itself if you were to physically approach the rainbow ring in space you would be teleported now here's something to note um, while listening to the story, they talked about um, a teleportation system. And I'm like, I have that too. But the main difference is that, well, theirs is restrictive. And mine comes from um, the rainbow ring itself is like a huge energy source. And of course, there needs to be something of an energy source for that but we don't talk about that just yet the portal spheres that are set up on the planet's surface in every continent or um, country to allow people easy access if they can't fly because the infinity fantasy galaxy happens to be a place where every single fantasy creature that humans have ever thought up spawn naturally there are places on Ferex where 
um, certain creatures are、um, native to that place. For instance, we have like the America part of Phoenix, where, like for instance, unicorns and dragons are native. Whereas in, say, for instance, the Caribbean area, you can mostly find mer people, etc. So here is how my teleportation system works. You step into the portal sphere, and it will teleport you to the place that you are most clearly thinking of. For instance, if you lived in London, and there was a portal sphere in New York, and when you stepped into the when you stepped up to the portal sphere, which is literally like a huge globe with spinning colors inside of it. You would be like, you just want to go home and lie down in your bed, and when you step through the portal sphere, it will actually put you directly into your house. It's not so in their story, and for for making you want to go and watch it, I, I won't spoil that much. But the difference between their teleport system and mine is that. It can kill you if you your mind is not clear enough. For instance, if you step into a portal sphere and you're thinking about going home or the flavor of that coffee you had at Starbucks the other day, it could split you in half and kill you. So this is basically like a huge disclaimer. It is your own choice. To step into the portal sphere, nobody is forcing you to do it. You 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 run the risk of losing your life if you're not thinking clearly enough. If you want to take that risk, go ahead. No government is going to stop you, and there's also no repercussions for someone accidentally killing themselves in a portal sphere. <laughs> so, so、uh, my plan is probably a tiny bit more brutal. So, um. Something that they mentioned got me to start thinking about a plot hole of my own story and its teleportation system. I can't remember what that was. I think I, I, I think I corrected it, but whatever the case was. Oh my gosh, this section is really long, isn't it? I was interested in hearing about their magic system because they have this sort of system where you could combine elements and it would produce a different effect. And I have something like that. I it's called dualities. I'm going to need to come up with another name for it, but essentially, you can probably guess from the name. That、um, you take two、um, elements, you combine them together, and then they form something that they themselves could not have made by their lonesome. And to top it off, I believe that I also have them being combined with each other, like fire and fire, and water and water. So I had to come up with creative ways to not like say. Oh, just put throw a tsunami on top of another tsunami. No, that's just too vague and generic. If I have to say so myself. For instance, if you were to combine fire and water, I call it a golden tsunami. It creates a tsunami of scalding water. Or, for instance, if you were to combine fire and wind, you get a shimmering draft. You get it makes a flame that gets stronger when confronted by wind currents and so on and so forth. I think my favorite of these that I have right now, I have like what, sixteen right now, is chilled CO two, which is the combination of ice and smoke, which creates a highly toxic fog that clogs the lungs with ice. It's fun. I mean. I made a whole freaking rune alphabet. I have what, like thirty, thirty-four, thirty-five runes that I just wrote because reasons. Like, like I don't know why I need all of this. 
like I have names for palace worker ranks. I have names, um, proper names for all of my um, elemental manea. Like fire is hearthstone, water is azeotrope, um, smoke is illusion, plants is chlorocell, which is a fun word that I made up. Um, when I was younger and I thought that it was really fun to say so I, I would use it all over the place earth is a damantite um, wind is Korand ice is hoarfrost I used to call it avalanche for a little bit before I decided to change it to um, hoarfrost instead and I did I get them all yeah I did and I don't have spells. I have strings of Manea. There are also roughly two man-made types of Manea. One that is um, surrounded by the concept of coding, like physical coding. Like being able to code a certain system into your own body that would allow you to use Manea that you weren't born with. For instance, my main character has oh my gosh this has been a whole half hour my main character is born as a plant fairy which means she is impartial to using chlorosal manea but she was taught how to use code manea from birth so she's able to use all the other elements including any other manea that she happens across it might take some time but she will eventually get used to it um then I have, um, well, the, the second man-made one, before I forget, is dice-based. And it's actually kind of, these two man-made manea are actually references to other pieces of media. The code comes from Mahoka Kuku Noriya to say, which is the irregular and magic high school, where magic is technology and vice versa and the dice based mania is actually based on the webtoon called dice like in all caps i thought that was super interesting and decided to incorporate it basically it's just a like a huge gamble of the power level of the mania that you're trying to activate it will end up either being super powerful or very very weak you can't mess with the odds basically and it's just basically for people to gamble with with their Manea power level. That's it. Well, I mean, so far. Then I have my Spatial Manea. It was called Spatial Manea until a couple of years ago when I made up a, a, a word for it like I did with Manea. I named it Selexa. How I got that name, I don't remember. But... It's basically just like, what you would think about, not really teleportation, because teleportation already kind of exists, but it is a part of Selixa Manea. So, with that said, I, I even wrote scripts, not scripts, every Manea functions a little differently. I have nothing written for illusion. Okay. So for instance, let me mention some stuff that goes on and maybe you'll get some ideas. So besides the seven elemental manea, um, there are also two other ones that occur naturally right now that are <sighs> spatial or solixa and Royal Manea. Yes, um, there is actually a type of Manea that dictates if someone is royal or not. And the types of Manea that they can use can do something like this. Promise Poison. A string of Manea that poisons as many targets as the royal needs. The poison will either kill or induce a coma depending on the severity of the promise that was broken. So basically, you can 
legally bind someone in a contract that they can't get away from, no matter how much they try. They can break it and try to go into hiding, but once that promise is broken, you either immediately die because the poison is already in your body, or you go into a coma to make sure that the um, the royal can get their hands on you after that. Okay, so we've got something like from Adamantite, one of the strings of Menea is Energy Switch. Channels vibrations from the user's body into the ground, creating a short earthquake. Pretty cool, right? And something from Selixa is Link Start. This is actually... The name of this is actually a reference to Sword Art Online. I don't actually like the anime, but I thought that them saying Link Start was pretty cool. So, so I ended up using it myself. I might tweak it a little bit to make it just not so obvious. It creates a mind link with the target and the user. It is sometimes used to make someone faint with an overload of information if the user is advanced enough. This cat cannot shut Yum. Go upstairs! Go upstairs! Why are you down here? Why are you messing with me? Eh? <sighs> Easy or trope? Oh, wait, hang on. I do have something written for illusion. Smoking field hinders the sight of every living thing in a set radius. Fun. Also, I have my best friend also helping me with these sometimes. And he, um, he gave me some ideas for some of them, which are pretty cool. So, for azeotrope, which is water, I have, um, let's see. There's this one that's, um, water ring. Creates water that has elemental abilities. So... For this, it actually has a deviation where you could use red or orange or blue, and depending on what color it is, it has a different effect. For instance, I've only written down two, but we have water ring, red or red water, spreads heated water with the intent of burning through a soft substance. If it is encased in ice, it retains its heat, will not evaporate. Well, I mean, yeah, it's made of Menea, so it's not actually water. It's Menea that looks like water, right? So, like, you have Hearthstone, which is fire. We have something called Hot Climate. Seeks out water in a given area and evaporates it. It's not that bad. I could tweak it a little. I don't think I will, though. Not sure what practicality that may have, but it is good to have things to pull from when I need to write stuff. So, Horfrost. So let's see. Um, I have something called Frostbite. Destroys the outside layer of the target. That includes humans, which means it will break down your skin. Exposing all of your insides. Yeah. It's a pretty scary, not going to lie. And then we have chlorophyll, which is based on plants and healing. So, let's do this. Of course, we have our main healing string of Menea, Synthesis. Rebounds life energy within blood, effectively healing wounds. Can also restore Menea level using code, basically. Um... Code has, if it is used with chlorocell in this instance, it can switch maniacal healing to physical healing. I'm, I'm talking about like physical energy. It can restore muscle, like make them fresh again, like that. But you can only, you can only accomplish that using code. So this has been far far too much information. However, uh, I just want to say that, yeah, that is how deep my story runs. If you're curious about 
where you can go to read this really awesome story that I've written. It's it's not even 10% done right now. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's mostly just head cannons, and I have written down everything as much as possible so I don't forget. But Kaguya, Masuri, Senpai. E oh my gosh, this is just amazing. So, let me continue my talk about Kaguya. <laughs> Sorry, I spent like half an hour on this. So, when I realized that I caught up with what they had released, I um, I decided to try another one of their series, and I decided to try the vampire one. And again, still no gender tag, and still aimed at a female audience. And something weird happened. Well, I mean, I wouldn't call it weird, but um, while reading the comments of one of the vampire series the episodes, I mean, um, I saw people talking about the werewolf butler and seeing how he was... Um, shy and cute and charming and I'm like I haven't heard him talk he's he's just been mentioned in passing what are people talking about and then I took a look at their videos and I realized that they were actually putting out a, a behind the scenes um series that technically went along with the main plot but it wouldn't subtract from the main story if you were not to listen to it basically the story was that it, um the listener got captured by a vampire and then in the days where the vampire was not around to take care of the human his um he assigned a, a wolf butler to take care of us and and, um, they actually had that, um, those conversations with the listener and the wolf butler separate. And I would not have known about it if they, um, if, if people in the comments were not talking about it. And so, I, after this, I was staring at this thumbnail for a solid minute just criticizing it with my eyes because not only am I a writer I'm also an artist and there is something wrong with this picture and I was trying to figure out what, what other things were wrong with it because if there is one thing wrong with it there's usually something else wrong with it and as I was staring at it and thinking about it I realized something that I probably should have realized a little earlier, not gonna lie. This series where this elf was portrayed on the thumbnail was called Sunna Elf. And I was like, wait a minute. Are they talking about the winter elf from the elf archaeologist series and um there's something that tipped me off when the elf that found the listener john in the forest was like um how was master russia i think that's how to pronounce it he was like yeah, he, he can be a little snippy and i'm like wait we had a conversation with this dude and i didn't hear about it and it was like so is this actually us talking to Russia? Because from what the elf was describing his master as, it was just that he was a cold person and that's it. But 
the the other thing describes them as ascended. So I went and listened to it, and indeed it was Master Lucia talking about us, talking to us, and asking about all of this stuff because, well, they research humans. So, um, yeah, not gonna lie, he's ascended. <laughs> I'm sorry, this book has taken so long. I, I, I need to stop. I really need to stop. Okay, so I need to I need, I need to make my closing remarks. The world building on in, in all of their stories are great. However, there's something that irks me about this channel. I kind of have a love hate relationship with this channel. Not gonna lie, more so because they seem to know what they're doing, and they seem to have a high standard. So. I can't understand how this sort of thing would just go beneath their noses unless they happen to be making money off their channel, which I have not seen evidence of just yet. They did a bunch of, what do you call these, concepts where they put up videos that, that left the, the, the story on a cliffhanger. And they were like, choose one, and we will continue with it. When the people chose, they did not delete the other stories. And they made it very clear that they will not be revisiting these stories, which means these things are going to be online and make very people... They will make people <laughs> very unhappy realizing that the people behind the story would just not revisit it because they made it very clear that the ones that were not picked will be vanished into the void or thrown into the void or something like that which is honestly a very cruel thing to do with a story especially if you made it to the point where people can be interested in it you don't throw away at characters like that, okay? Just don't. Ugh. You want to know how strongly I feel about people throwing away characters that they made? I found an old Lunatics Unleashed fanfiction. I rehashed it, and I put it into my Infinity Fantasy Galaxy on Genesis, which is one of the planets in the solar system where Ferex resides. It's basically a plant full of furries, because that's what Lunatics Unleashed was to begin with. If you haven't seen Lunatics Unleashed, it's basically Looney Tunes, but anime. They stand upright, they have fur, and they have animal heads. Along with magical powers, but whatever. What do you want? Either you go back and deal with it, or you... Delete the video from existence. Don't just leave it there. But then again, this is not my channel and I can't really tell them what to do. However, that isn't going to stop me from being mad at their decisions. That is all I'm going to say. Sayonara. <laughs>